Ready to kick some butt? Unless you want your butt kicked. Nobody wants that, do they? Then there's a price to pay. Amen? <laughs> there's a price to play. <laughs> Glory. You know, one day I was in my living room. Not just one day, but multiple days. <laughs> but as I was sitting in my living room, this voice came to me and said, Guy. And I said, yes. And he said, come up. And I left my living room, ran upstairs, went into my bedroom, got on my knees and said, yes, Lord, what's up? He probably heard this before. He said, Nothing. I said, nothing? I said, yeah, I want to know if you'd come. While I was worshiping this morning, the Lord said, many don't come when I call. They miss so much. They miss so much. Then I saw foundations, like platforms. And one was trying to connect to another. He said, what happens is my people leave their first foundation and they begin to build on another one. And then they leave that one and they build on another one. And they leave that one and build on another one. And I saw all these connections to all these foundations and they all crumbled. He said, because so many times they don't come back to the basics. He said, I've been calling, and many haven't been answering. Because they're so caught up in their own agenda. They're so caught up in their own emotions. They're so caught up in their own offenses. They're so caught up in their own bitterness. They're so caught up in their own lives that they can't hear me when I call. Everything floods out his voice. He wants to remind us that we were rescued for more than what we think. There's so much more. His greatest desire is that we know who he is and who we are in him. Not imaginary reality. There's a lot of people who have an imagination relationship. Yeah, I know the Lord. He gives me visions and all kinds of stuff, right? Oh, your fruits stink. He wants us to really know who he is. And knowing who he is is how we know who we are. Because the one thing the enemy comes to do is to steal, kill, and destroy. And the first thing, again, he wants to steal your identity. You know, we go through a process of losing our identity to gain his. We identify ourselves in all of the circumstances of life, past. We identify ourselves of race. We identify ourselves as how much money, how much we don't have, how much we have. What we have accomplished, what we failed. All of these things we want to, we have a tendency to identify ourselves. And the enemy's attempting all the time to steal our identity. And the thing God is trying to do is bring us through a process to cut us loose from our identity of the old. Anything. That's why the word says, if, as a warrior of Jesus Christ, we are not to be entangled with the affairs of this world. Entanglement in the affairs of this world is giving us an identity of this world. We must be cut loose of these things. We identify our, we have a tendency to identify ourselves with our talents and abilities and jobs. What we do instead of what he's done. There's a difference. So when he's saying, I, I, I call and nobody, and nobody answers, or I'm calling this person, they're not answering, they're not, I'm not getting their attention. 
And this is why so many times we fall into afflictions, because we go astray, because we're not answering when he's calling. This is an area where we've got to become more sensitive, more discerning, more willing to surrender everything and more willing to accept everything from him. You know, after I'd, I'd gotten saved and so forth, the Lord brought me through multiple ways of training. Training. Training never stops. It, it just never stops. So we must have a, a heart that's willing to be trained. We must be willing to let things down and go to the next training session. Amen? And, and so many times we try to bring what we what that training session was into the next session and try and control that session instead of letting that training session stay where it was and learn more. Now, I'm just releasing what the Spirit is sharing with me. And, and in this, he's trying to progress us more into his image and likeness, but there's so many places of limitations that hold us back just because of these entanglements that sometimes we ignore. Ignore. So many times he's calling us to press in more in worship. He's saying, come on a little bit closer. Come on a little bit closer. And we get content with second chamber instead of going all the way into the third chamber. Come on a little bit closer. Sometimes he's asking us to lay something down so we can pick up something new. There's just so many things that he's trying to bring to me and you. And his desire is that relationship to know his voice. He said to me, those who are anxious can't hear me. They can't hear me. Because it is a voice of fear. Voices of fear will drown out the voice of God. There's so many things that drowned out the voice of God. And then they believe that it's God telling them because they can't see all the way through. And everything seems to be going cool. Yeah. But then all of a sudden they come into a, a dead end. And a literally dead end. For me and you, there are no dead ends. The only dead end is our life in exchange for his life. And that's an everyday process. So remember that training never stops. Learning never stops. He's always trying to bring us to another level. He's always trying to bring us to a place and prepare us for something more. But if we reject the preparing, the preparation, we don't get the more. You know what happens then everything repeats itself. And the more doesn't come. In Psalm 15, would you go there please? Look what happened to Israel when he called Israel and they didn't answer him. Destruction. People went into captivity. In Psalm 15, you know, we're, we're, again, we're seeing an escalation right now of the exposure of wickedness. Please understand that Judgment has been on the earth since the fall of Adam and Eve. God has been judging. Judgment has always been on the earth. The Lord said to me this this morning, he said, judgment's always been on the earth. He said, just, just a love, different level of judgment. Sometimes it's stronger, sometimes it's not. But judgment has always been on the earth. Always. And judgment will stay on the earth until it's ended, it's done. Until the Prince of Peace comes and does his final judgment. But judgment will always be on the earth. God is always judging. He judges our fruits. He judges everything. 
He's judging the wicked. He's judging everything. He's judging the righteous. Judgment has always been on the earth. But there's just a different level of judgments in certain areas, certain people. There's a level of judgment. Remember, when Jesus showed up, he said that the ruler of this earth had been judged. Amen? But he still rules the earth. So even though the ruler of the earth was already judged, but he's still ruling the earth. <laughs> but because of that judgment, in his judgment, he gave authority to his body to overcome the ruler of the earth. That's a part of that judgment. Does everybody understand that? And, and so in this, judgment comes on the body of Christ because God is judging certain areas. Judgment is in the house of God before everywhere else. Why? Because he's always going to judge his people. You know, there's always first conviction, rebuke, amen, chastening, None of that works judgment before wrath because judgment is the final before the wrath of God. Judgment is also used in the area where we're reaping what we sowed. Amen. But know that God is always trying to turn things around to bring us into a place of training. Training. He wants to know if we're willing to let down everything, let go of everything. He wants to know if we're willing to hear him, be attentive to the voice, and come when he calls. In Psalm 15, is everybody there? Verse 1. It says, Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle? That's in his presence. Amen. And who may dwell in your holy hill? He who what? Walks up rightly. A walker is a doer. See, there's a difference between a talker and a walker. There are many who talk, but they can't walk. And that's what God is talking about right now. This is where judgment is coming on, walker or talker. He who walks uprightly and works righteousness and speaks truth in his heart. He's, this is the one, this is the individual that has access to the things of God. Who speaks the truth in his heart. Who's honest with himself, with others. He who does not backbite with his tongue. Why? Because someone who backbite with their tongue is what they call a talker. They're not walkers. Nor does evil to his neighbor. Nor does he take up a reproach against his friend. And whose eyes a vile person is despised. In other words, he, doesn't, he despises an individual that's not walking upright. It doesn't mean he hates that person. Amen. But this individual or individuals or organizations, whatever, they're antichrist or coming against God's will. They disapprove of them. But he honors those who what? Fear the Lord. Reverence, honor, and respect. One who fears the Lord is a walker. Amen? Again, there's a lot of talkers, but there's not enough walkers. He who swears to his own hurt and doesn't change, no matter what comes, no matter what happens, on course, doesn't get anxious, doesn't fear, waits, 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 waits. You know, the longer you wait, the more you work out. He who does not put out his money at usury, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent, he who does these things shall never be moved. A walker, not a talker. He walks according to the law of the Spirit and counsel of the Lord. If you're a walker, you will walk according to the law, the spirit, and the counsel of the Lord. The law is associated with his word. The word says that his law is in our hearts and mind. 
There is a reward for walkers. They have access. They have access to God's presence. They have access in fellowship with him. They have access to his house in the storehouses. They have access to everything. Promises of inheritance and they have protection. Access. In 2 Peter chapter 3. Second Peter chapter three. Uh oh. oh. Praise God. Is everybody there? In verse one. Let's speak it. Beloved, I now write to you the second epistle in both of which I stir up your pure minds by way of reminder that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days walking according to their own lust, saying, in other words, a talker is considered a scoffer. And they will be saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. Now, this is how God sees things. He's saying a person that's a talker, not a walker, is a scoffer in my eyes. There's a difference. Verse 5. For this they willfully forget that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of water and in the water, by which the world that had then existed perished being flooded with water. But the heavens and the earth, which are now preserved by the same word, are reserved for fire until the day of what? Judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, do not forget this one thing that with the with the Lord, one day is a thousand years, and a thousand years is of one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to what? Repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in a night in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of person ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? Looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be what? Diligent to be found by him in peace without spot and blameless. And consider that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given to him, has written to you. As also in all of his epistles, speaking in them, of these things in which are some things hard to understand, which untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction, as they do also the rest of the scriptures. Again, scoffers are talkers. They are not walkers. Amen? In Proverbs 19. Why is he telling us? Because you're seeing it all over. You're seeing, and what's happening is the world is trying to justify scoffers. They're trying to protect them. Quiet, because the ruler of this world is the greatest scoffer. In Proverbs 19. In 
Aleluia. In verse 29, Proverbs 19, verse 29, it says, judgments are prepared for scoffers and beatings for the back of fools. Again, a scoffer, it says, judgments are prepared for the scoffer. Why? Because they rejected conviction, they rejected rebuke. They rejected chastening, and now they're under judgment. Does everybody understand? All words, no actions. And Proverbs 21. Especially in the news media and these politicians and so forth, lots of words. They make great promises, but they can't fulfill nothing. They're all set talkers, but none of them are really doers. Thank God we got a president that's a doer. The problem is, is all the scoffers are trying to prevent him from doing. But judgment is on these scoffers. Watch. I'm telling you, be sensitive and attentive. You're going to see it come down. God's judgment is coming down on them big time. They won't get away with it for my dad. No way. Proverbs 21, verse 21. Let's speak it. He who follows righteousness and mercy finds life, righteousness, and honor. A wise man scales the city of the mighty and brings down the trusted stronghold. Because he's a fighter. Whoever guards his mouth and tongue keeps his soul from troubles. A proud and haughty man scoffer is his name he acts with arrogant pride wow proud haughtiness individuals are called scoffers why because they're talkers not doers in proverbs 13 listen they're in the body and out of the body Amen? They're not only in the body of Christ, but they're in the world. They're scoffers all over. And judgment is on them. Proverbs 13, verse 1. Scoffers are talkers. They are not walkers. Amen? A wise son heeds the father's instruction. But a scoffer does not listen to rebuke. A man shall eat well by the fruit of his mouth. But the soul of the unfaithful feeds on violence. That's what you speak is what you eat. Verse 3. He who guards his mouth preserves his life. But he who opens wide his lips shall have what? Destruction. A scoffer is a talker rejects. Rebuke, they talk, they will lead to destruction because they do nothing but talk. I was a scoffer at one time. I talked about all kinds of stuff. We are all scoffers. Amen? Until you got filled and baptized with the Holy Spirit, then you're supposed to come out of being a scoffer. But not enough people do. They're still out there scoffing. And that's not coughing. They're scoffing. Proverbs 14. Scoffers fight for their life. Talkers don't have one. I mean, walkers don't have one. <laughs> Amen? People that talk are always promoting their life. <laughs> They're talkers, not walkers. In verse 6, Proverbs 14, 6. A scoffer seeks wisdom and doesn't find it. Why? Because it's not released to them. God won't give it to them. What does wisdom do? It tells you what to do. That's why they always stay in a state of confusion. They're uncertain what the next thing is. They don't know. But knowledge is easy to him who understands. Why? Because he's a walker. There's a difference. 
Go from a, the presence of a foolish man when you do not perceive him, perceive in him the lips of what? Knowledge. The wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way, but the folly of fools is deceit. Again, talkers seek wisdom, but it will not be released. Wisdom tells us what to do. They are unable to make correct choices. Proverbs 15, 12. A scoffer does not what? Does not love. A scoffer does not love one who corrects them. <laughs> You know, there's people that, and they hate to be corrected. You and I should look for it. Why? Because correction brings protection. We should be looking for correction. We should be looking for conviction. We should always want to receive it. Anyone who's rejecting it is prideful. Humility receives it. Why? Because it's a part of training. Your correction is for training. But scoffers don't know, know true love. It rejects correction, refusing counsel from, the, from wise people or from wisdom. Philippians 3. Philippians chapter 3. So a walker is one who pleases God. Amen? A talker is a scoffer. They, they don't please God. They just run their mouth. <clears throat> Make promises. Can't fulfill anything. Proverbs 3, verse 17. Is everybody there? Brethren. Join in following my example and note those who walk. Who what? Who so walk as you have us for a pattern. For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping that they are enemies of the cross of Christ. These are called scoffers. Whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, whose glory is in their shame, who set their mind on earthly things. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lonely body that it may be conformed to his glorious body according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. Scoffers <laughs> or talkers, they are enemies of the power of the, cry, of cr the cross, they set their ways according to the worldly and emotional standard of self-selfishness and self-preservation. I'll say that again. They set their ways, their minds, according to the worldly and emotional standards of self, selfishness, self-preservation, and self-promoting. They are disconnected from the hereafter or the eternal. It's not in their thoughts. See, for you and I as a walker who is a believer that follows, it should always be there. Why? Because every decision is leading to up or down. Amen. Everything we do is leading towards heaven or towards hell. One or the other. So that should be in front of us all the time. Second Timothy chapter three. I, I see these politicians that are scoffers. And then they ask people to pray for the president when God ain't even answering their prayers. Oh, we need to pray for it. It's just nothing but manipulation because scoffers love to manipulate. Oh. 
It always does. It just doesn't come when we expect it to. 2 Timothy 3, verse 1. But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come, which we've read this over and over and over. Men will be what? Lovers of themselves. Why? Because these are scoffers. Lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders, without self-control, brutal despisers of good. They are traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. They have a form of godliness. Oh, they know how to quote it. They know how to talk it. But they can't walk it. But they deny the power of God. Why? Because they can't walk. To walk it, you have power. It says, and from such people do what? Turn away. These are end time scoffers <laughs> or end time talkers. They're boasters. The Lord's again said, judgment is upon them. First Peter two, or first Peter four, I'm sorry. First Peter chapter four. First Peter chapter four. In verse twelve. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Beloved, don't think it's strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to train you. See what that word try is? It's train. Why? We're always in training. So don't think it's strange concerning that fiery trial, that challenge that's going to train you. Don't reject it. <laughs> It's going to train you as though some strange thing has happened to you. But rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings. You know what? Jesus was trained also while he was here. You know why? Think about this. He took on every pain for me and you that he might have compassion on us. There isn't anything that happened to him that can happen to me and you. He took it all so that he could have compassion on me and you. He suffered to receive the sufferings we got, we get. Can you imagine God Almighty putting on flesh to come to this realm? God Almighty, the creator of all things, pure, holy, came in, put on flesh, and came in into contaminated arena and took on all the pain and sufferings as a child born into this world, took it all. As a teenager, through pure, what do you call it? Puberty. <laughs> Puberty. <laughs> through all of that, he, he went the same thing you and I did. He had all the lustful things and everything that you and I did, but you know what? He had dominion. Because he was connected. He was connected all the way. He could have disconnected. He could have just said, I'm done with this. Kill everyone. Take me home, Dad. I'm done. I mean, remember when he was, what, 12 or 13? He was in the synagogues preaching. And his parents were looking for him. That was the first time he ran away. See, he was a teenager, too. Ran away from home, booked. They were looking for him for three days. But he was about his father's business because he was connected. Heck, when we ran away from home, we were about the father from hell's business. Hallelujah. Glory. But rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's suffering, no longer the devil's suffering. <laughs> That when he, his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. If you, verse 14, if you are reproached for the name of Christ, beloved, blessed are you. 
For the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. On their part he's blasphemed, but on your part he's glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or as a busybody in other people's matters and so forth. Yet, if anyone suffers as a Christian, suffer, suffering as a Christian is different because there's persecution. You'll be hated by many. You won't be understood by many. There's a suffering as being a Christian because you're Christ-like. If they hated him, they'll hate you too. But there's an area where Christians are bringing on their own sufferings because they're touching on clean things, because they're turning into scoffers, because they're not hearing when God calls, because they're not obedient to what he's doing or asking them to do. Remember, every one of us was sent into this world to fulfill a mission. It's a terrible thing not to fulfill a mission or a terrible thing to be successful in the wrong thing. Amen? In verse 16, yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. For the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God. And if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? Obey the gospel. Again, obey the law of God. Obey the gospel. Judgment. Why? Because they are scoffers. They're talkers, not walkers. Now, if the righteous one is scarcely saved, where will the ungodly and the sinner appear? Therefore, let those who suffer according to the will of God commit their soul to him in doing good as to a faithful creator. Remember, fiery trials are to train you to discern and to help and depart from evil, but discern its strategies. See, you and I got to discern the evil strategies. You must know how the enemy uses, manipulates, how he lies, how he deceives, how he influences. You and I must know these things. Amen? Go to Deuteronomy 10. That's why we're in training all the time. So your fiery trial is for training. And unless you touch unclean things, then your fiery trial is usually chasing inner judgment. Amen? I see, I've run into a lot of Christians Always, yeah, I'm suffering for Jesus. Oh, really? Well, you're bringing somebody that's suffering on yourself with that bottle of booze in your hand. You're bringing a lot of suffering on yourself with that cigarette in your hand. You're bringing a lot of suffering on yourself with that pornography in your house. You're bringing a lot of suffering on yourself with all that secular music. I'm just suffering for Jesus. No, you're just suffering because you opened the door to the devil. That's your suffering. Amen? Well, I don't understand. I go to church. I pay tithes. I do this. I do that. Well, you need to get rid of the guy that you're sleeping with. Or you need to get rid of the girl you're shacking up with. But you don't understand. They have pay the rent. <laughs> so you're a prostitute for the rent. That's simple enough. But see, they can't see that way. They don't think that way. Because they're talkers, not walkers. Verse 12. Deuteronomy 10, 12. Is everybody there? And now Israel, remember God speaks to Israel, he speaks about the body. What does the Lord your God require of you? But to what? Fear the Lord. Come on, everybody speak this, because this is what God wants you required of me and you. Amen? But to what? Fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all of your soul, 
and to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command you today for your good. Indeed, heaven and the highest heavens belong to the Lord your God, also the earth with all that is in it. The Lord delighted only in your fathers to love them, and he chose their descendants after them, you above all peoples, as it is this day. Therefore, circumcise the foreskin of your heart and be stiff-necked no longer. For the Lord your God is God, the God of gods and the Lord of lords, the great God, mighty and awesome, who shows no partiality nor takes a bribe. He administers justice for the fatherless and the widow and loves the stranger, giving him food and clothing. Therefore, love the stranger, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. You shall fear the Lord your God, you shall serve him, and to him you shall hold fast and take oaths in his name. He is your praise, he is your God, who has done for you these great and awesome things which your eyes have seen. Your fathers went down to Egypt with 70 persons, and now the Lord your God has made you as the stars of heaven in multitude. What the Lord requires, walk in his ways, love him, serve him, keep his commands, execute them, and hold fast to him. That's his requirement. Everybody, what's God want from me? There it is. That's what he wants from you. If you're not willing to give it, you're not his. Second Peter 2. But people will say, but I try. Those are talkers. There's an, doing is a difference in trying. Okay, I'll try it. No, don't try it. Just do it. Second Pete. Everybody okay? Verse 1. But there were also false prophets among the people, even as there will be false teachers among you. These are talkers who will secretly bring in destructive heresy, heresies, even denying the Lord who bought them and bring on themselves swift destruction. And many will follow their destructive ways because of whom the way of truth will be blasphemed. By covetousness, they will exploit you with deceptive words. Why? Because they're Scoffers, they're talkers, aren't they? For a long time their judgment has not been idle and their destruction does not slumber. For if God did not spare the angels who sinned but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment and did not spare the ancient world but saved Noah, one of eight people, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood on the world of the ungodly and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them to destruction, making them an example to those who afterward would live ungodly, and delivered righteous Lot, who was oppressed by the filthy conduct of the wicked. For the righteous man dwelling among them tormented his righteous soul from day to day by seeing and hearing their lawless deeds. That's how we should be right now. Then the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations and reserve the unjust punishment for the day of judgment, especially those who walk, walk according to the flesh. These are scoffers in the lust of uncleanness and despise authority. They are presumptuous, self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil dignitary, where angels, whereas angels who are greater in power and might do not bring a reviling accusation against them before the Lord. But these, like natural brute beasts, make to be caught and destroyed, speak evil of things they do not understand, and will utterly perish in their own corruption, and will receive the wages of unrighteousness as those who count it pleasure to carouse in the daytime. They are spots and blemishes carousing in their own deception while they feast with you, having eyes full of adultery and cannot cease from sin, enticing unstable souls. They have a heart trained in covetous practices, and are accursed children. They have forsaken the right way and gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Baar, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. But he was rebuked 
for his iniquity, a dumb donkey talk, speaking with a man's voice, restrained the madness of that prophet. These are wells without water, clouds carried by tempests, for whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. And when they speak great swelling words because they're talkers, which we call scoffers, words of emptiness, they allure through the lust of the flesh, to lewdness, the ones who have actually escaped from those who live in error. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are slaves of corruption. For by whom a person is overcome by him, he is brought into bondage. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome, the latter end is worse for them than the beginning. In other words, it's more difficult. For it would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than have knowing it to turn from the holy commandment delivered to them. But as it has happened to them according to the true proverb, a dog returns to his own vomit. That means the dog represents demonized individual. These are scoffers. They are talkers. And so having washed to her wallowing in mire. Again, these are talkers, not walkers. They walk according to the flesh, according to the ways of the world. In Psalm 84, Oh, hallelujah. You'll see the world differently today. Psalm 84, verse 8. Let's speak it. O Lord, God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. O God, behold our shield and look upon the face of your anointed. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will be withheld to those who what? Walk uprightly. Nothing good will be withheld from you or me who is a walker. But they will be withheld to scoffers and talkers. Amen. O Lord of hosts, bless is the man who trusts in you. Praise God. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians 1. Verse 9. Is everybody there? For this reason, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you may walk, what? Worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Remember, God is always trying to increase Everything. Strengthen with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption through his blood and the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. And for by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. Ephesians 2. Walk worthy. Must be a worthy walker. Ephesians 2, verse 1. 
Everybody there? And you who he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked as a talker, as a scoffer. Why? According to the course of this world, according to the prince of power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, which as the others, but God who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us even when we were idiots, scoffers, talkers. <laughs> he died for us. Amen. And made us, uh, and, and even when we were dead in trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ. For by grace you've been saved. In other words, so you must cooperate. I'm saved by grace. No, you're saved by cooperation with the plan. And raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you've been saved through faith, that not of yourselves it is a gift of God. Genesis 5. Genesis chapter 5. And 30 more scriptures will be good. I'm not telling the truth. <laughs> Genesis chapter 5. Are you learning something? In verse 21. Genesis 5, 21. How many of y'all want to be a walker or a scoffer? Amen. Then don't be a talker. Amen. <laughs> Verse 21. Enoch lived 65 years and begot Methuselah. After he begot Methuselah, Enoch walked with God 300 years and he had sons and daughters so all the days of Enoch were 365 years and Enoch walked with God and he was not for he was raptured he was what raptured so do you think scoffers are going to get raptured no They'll be left behind. Think about this. They will be left behind. They will not make it. They will go through tri tribulation. Every scoffer will be left behind. Everyone. Because they're not walkers. Only walkers. The ones that walk will be taken. Walk uprightly. Walk according to his will. Execute his will. Those are walkers. Those that are not are scoffers. Because they do nothing but talk, but don't do. Amen? Psalm 18. That's a great reward, isn't it? Praise God. I can't wait to leave my sneakers behind. <laughs> so I'm going up. I'm going to see who grabs them. Oh, I got them. <laughs> Glory. Psalm 18, verse 20. Then one more scripture or something like that. Yeah, that's right. Psalm 18, verse 20. Is everybody there? The Lord rewarded me according to my what? Righteousness. According to the cleanness of my hands. He has recompensed me, for I have kept the ways of the Lord, and have not wickedly departed from my God. For all his judgments were before me. Snap. And I did not put away his statutes from me. I was also blameless before him. I kept myself from iniquity. Therefore the Lord has recompensed me according to my righteousness and according to the cleanness of my 
hands in his sight. Why? Because this individual walked uprightly. Psalm 1. Not someone, Psalm 1. Amen? Glory. Psalm 1, verse 1. Is everybody there? Let's speak this. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. <laughs> who walks not in the counsel. So the counsel of the ungodly are talkers and scoffers. Nor sits in the path of sinners, not just liars. Nor sits in the seat of the scornful. What a scoffer. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, or the truth. And in his law, he meditates day and night. In other words, it's always before him. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither. And whatever he does or what? Prosper. But the ungodly, the rebellious, are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Why? Because they are always thirsty. They are dry. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the reward. This judgment is reward. Nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. The way of the scoffful shall what? Scoffers shall what? Perish. They're talkers. They're not walkers. God is judging. Whether we're a walker or we're a talker. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask that the seed be imparted and bring us wisdom that we may have understanding to see these things through. That we may see your judgments before us and everything. That we will set you before us so that we know the directions and the paths that we're to follow. Knowing that you have a special plan for each and every one. And you're calling us to fulfill it. To be trained by it. And to be in position. So that your kingdom will come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Prepare our hearts for communion and establish your character in us. In Jesus name.